G'day legends and welcome to episode two of Declared. I'm coming to you from Melbourne, South Melbourne in fact, and I have two wonderful people here with me, Andrew Walton and Barbie Devchand, who are mentors here at Cricket Mentoring. Um, they're great friends of mine. So I'm thrilled to be here in Melbourne and with these guys, how's things, people? Wonderful day in Melbourne, Tommy. Thank you for making the effort to be here. Excellent. Good to be in Melbourne altogether. It's been a while. So Andrew's obviously a resident of Melbourne for a long time. Barbie has relocated over here. Uh, at the start of this summer and is in doing incredibly well for Ringwood Cricket Club, captaining them successfully. Um, so, how many, Barbie, how many runs? Total? Yeah. Or, oh, I actually have no idea. 600 yeah. plus. She's in the top few <laughs> run scorers in the competition. In the she's top. taking wickets, so she's doing incredibly well. So <laughs> I'll take that, 600 plus, goodness. We might touch on that at another point in time. But guys, uh, this is all about just chatting about what's going on in world cricket. Yep. Uh, Reedy and I did the first episode last week and we're just going to get some sort of feedback from our community and see if people find this interesting. So um, I think we'll start with the Big Bash. The Sydney Sixers winning the Big Bash, the first time they've won since BBL won. And our friends here at Cricket Mentoring, uh, Josh Philippi, ambassador of ours, man of the match, and your good mate, who we're hoping to possibly oh. do an interview this week, Greg Shippard, the coach. How good's that? For, for Shippy, an amazing... Um successful achievement given that the stars sacked him a couple of years ago to create a difference in, in, in culture and he probably found at the time he'd gone through the experience of being the Victorian coach for over 10 years and being the inaugural stars coach. This is really rejuvenating at the, at the Sixers and um, particularly some of the, the bold decisions in bringing in Josh into in the squad and Joe Denley in, in, in previous seasons and what a luxury though, Tom, you get blokes like Smith, Lyon and Hazelwood to come back for the final series. Well, I, I picked the Sixers, I was chatting with some mates, I think I said this on last week's episode, I was chatting with some mates a few weeks ago and I said the Sixers are going to be incredibly hard to defeat. On that note, the Sixers are going to be so hard to beat, I, I remember saying it to a few guys a little while ago, with Smith, Lyon, Hazelwood back in their side, and then you, you add in Vince and Curran as they're overseas, flips firing. Yep. Um, Abbott and Dorcious are, are great bowlers and, and hard to get away. Daniel Hughes and Moses and Reeks, extremely experienced. I think they're going to be so tough to beat in Sydney this Saturday. With those three guys coming back in, Flip was coming back into form. And yeah, shout out to Flip. What an awesome series to get close to 500 runs, their leading run scorer, and then man of the match in the final. At Cricket Mentoring, we we're absolutely thrilled to have him as an ambassador. Obviously, he had his sticker on our bat, on his, our sticker on his bats. But to have him as a mate, um, also, yeah, I'm very, very sort of proud of him. Um, but yeah, really good tournament. Shame about the rain, but it's good that they got on. Yeah, just on Joshua, how much do you think he wrestled with not accepting a WA offer and, and being on the other side of the country during the, the tournament? What, what did you pick up from that sort of decision? Yeah, well, um, the conversations I've had with him, both at the time and, and since, it was it was a really tough decision because I feel like he, he felt there was pressure from WA that there might be ramifications if he was to leave and that sort of meant he wanted to stay. But then in the end, it was a bit of a no-brainer. Um, it was a contract and the opportunity to keep and, and actually play compared to, all right, well, you're our first reserve if someone gets injured and if someone goes and plays for Australia, you'll get on that sub list. So, yeah, it was a no-brainer and obviously has, has changed his life and changed his career immensely. And so, yeah, to see him do what he did on the weekend was very, very pleasing. And we actually, we chatted a bit after he was left out of the um, one-day final for Western Australia early in the season. In the same week, he was left out of the Shield squad. And he was pretty flat. He was um, pretty flat. He had to go back to um, grade cricket for a couple of weeks. And he said he was just really looking forward to the big bash. So to come away sort of a few months later and have done what he did was awesome. A few weeks ago, when the Stars played the Sixers in Melbourne and Marcus Stornis had that just amazing innings, uh, the day before, Greg allowed myself to bring a few kids into the Stars practice session before the Sixers. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Sixers practice Sixers, session yeah. before the match. And when you sit back and you sort of look it through the lens, that they, the group, they seem so comfortable, relaxed. Obviously the next, the next day wasn't expected, yet you could really feel that sort of sense of purpose within the Sixers squad and they were ready to, to sort of turn it on. Even with Sean Abbott was coming back from injury, wasn't quite right. It's a little thing, and I'm gonna throw a Tigers connection here, um, Tommy, about building success. Uh, the Sixers general manager is Jody Hawkins. The female general manager runs yeah. the franchise. Greg Shippard, very experienced, very calm, very controlled individual. It seems to be a perfect um, unison, not just in building the squad, yet sometimes when you have all the big guys come back, it can become a, a distraction to the group. Yet, to his credit, Josh didn't leave it for Steve Smith to do something in the match. He, he took on that responsibility himself. Um, Steve O'Keefe played a role. Didn't, Steve O'Keefe didn't leave it to a Hazelwood or a Lyon 
to be the match winner. So that, that's, I think, speaks volumes about the group overall. So well done to the Sixers, cracking effort. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, moving on to the Under-19 World Cup. What an upset yeah, that was. Unreal. Bangladesh taking India, Duckworth Lewis. But if you look at the sheer size of the nations and the cricket nations, everything that's backing them to have such an underdog, firstly make the final. That was big as it is and seeing them celebrate in the semi-final against New Zealand. To actually take India down on the day under pressure, that's when it matters. It's pretty unbelievable to see. Yeah, the, um, the Bangladesh captain has, has come out since then and said it's just the beginning and obviously their, their system, they're, they've been in world cricket for probably 20 odd years now and they're probably really starting to see the benefits of, of the sort of system they've, they've created over the last 20 odd years and and um, bad luck to India, we all love India, India is yeah. a second home for, for you Andrew and becoming a second home for me and, and, and you Barbie, we, we all love going to India but it is nice to see the underdog get up sometimes um, and again yeah Duckworth Lewis Bangladesh but the, the Bangladeshi captain stood up under pressure um, just check the scorecard he got, 43 not out of 77 balls. Team got to chase the runs down. Never easy to bat second in a final, to do it in a World Cup final. Team seven down, it's a huge effort. And the comment about that there seemed to be an extraordinary level of comp emotional competition between the countries that, um, to see it coming through at junior level, just, yeah. I suppose, it, it's just great to see how that pride, mm. when you represent your nation, um, is evident there, so I think you described a bit of spite in the game. Well, the article, I didn't watch any of it, but the article I read this morning said that there was a fair bit, and when, when Bangladesh won, I think they carried on a bit, and the Indians weren't right. too pleased, and I don't know how many times the Indian boys would have lost, and they probably weren't used to it, but yeah, apparently there was a little bit in it. Um, but I was speaking to um, our, our good friend Andrew, Chris Rogers, last night, who was the coach of the Australian under-19 side. They arrived back into Australia yesterday, and he said both India and Bangladesh the groups had had in excess of 40 matches together. Whereas leading into the tournament, the Aussies had had seven. And he said that if the tournament was to start now, he thought the Aussies were prime and ready to go. And he thought that a lot of the guys didn't understand their role, didn't understand their teammates. And, and that really showed that the more cricket these uh, other countries had played together made such an impact. So. Well done to Bangladesh, and no doubt we'll see Bangladesh become a real powerhouse of world cricket in the next 10 to 15 years as these younger players progress through to senior cricket. Absolutely. Um, Barbie, moving on to the women's tri series that's being held here in Melbourne. Um, it's been all over the shop, hasn't it? It has been all over the shops. So I think everyone, as of yesterday, everyone has beaten everyone. England took Australia in that first game, and then on Saturday, it's an unbelievable game where India traced down 170 odd against the Aussies. Um, which was very unexpected because there'd been a lot of criticism around India and the way they were playing coming in, particularly their big guns. You've got Harman Prick Kaur, who's one of the most explosive players, but was taking the time in lots of lines. You hear the commentary, everyone was talking about why aren't they having a crack. But to see India and a couple of smaller names come out at the top of the order and smash the Aussies all over the place, chase down 170 quite easily in the end, um, was pretty special. And I think what it does is it sets up the World Cup beautifully. It was an intriguing match. I went on Saturday. It was an intriguing match. The Australian bowling, how they they didn't play Taylor Vlaming, so they decided to sort of step away from the pace barrage and being successful. And they used more of a spin friendly. And Meg was forced to use five bowlers. The first five bowlers were all different. So Australia was sort of placed in a different position from a pressure perspective. And so I'm sure, it's one of those interesting things. Over, I'm sure that India would have got plenty out of it in the way to Australia down. Matthew Mott was probably unhappy inside. Yet he was probably okay, okay because we actually learned something that I think was Sophie's first three balls went for four yep. in the third. The third, so she bowled the next over after a lease with with the wind, and so we thought she would have been able to defend that over. She was hit over the offside. So you know, an intriguing, fascinating game. It sets up beautifully ahead the the World Cup. So, but India, they were they were very powerful, very impressive. Yep. Good local support too. Yeah, and Masses. and um, I suppose a, an exciting thing for the Aussies is they're doing reasonably well still, and Alyssa, Alyssa Healy hasn't fired yet. So if she can get going at the top of the order, um, the Aussies will be yeah. hard to beat. Just on that, so Barbie, a lot of these players you've, you've played with and against, and as a fair to say, across the tri series, we weren't over reliant upon Meg or Alyssa or Elise to be the, the, the superstars and carry us through. 
some of the more impressive performances that you might have seen from the other players? Well, I think someone who's been consistent for a long time now and probably doesn't make the headline as much as Beth Mooney. Mm -hmm. And I know she played well yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get to watch the games we were playing, but she's someone that she scored in weird areas. Ah. And when people come up with different plans, I know when we, we talk about Lisa Perry, very technically correct. Meg Lanning has her clear strengths and she, on her day, can dominate you. Unless here, she's explosive. But Beth Mooney, someone that constantly chips in for the 30s, 40s, 50s. She has got a couple of T20-hundreds as well. And I actually think she's a key to the World Cup in terms of the top right. of the order, purely from a consistency point of view. Right. It's very rare. I'd love to, I don't know the exact numbers to be honest, but if you go back and look at, say, the last two years, I don't reckon she's failed more than twice in a row. On that point, weird areas, just yeah. for our, So if, if you're bowling, like yeah. what, what's, what's a weird area that you're Weird area, so like it's, if you think about traditional cricket, you bowl the ball, fourth, fifth stump, they're hitting you through mid off, yeah. for example. She'll find a way to hit you through cow and the wicket safely. So it's right. not a hack, that's her strength. Not a hack. Uh, that's, that's the difference for me. Mm. So she goes to the line of the ball mm -hmm. and she's using her hands from a really strong base. It's not, I'm just swiping across here. Keeps her hands low. So what she does, yes, yeah, she, yeah. she's low, she gets to the line of the ball perfectly and her hands are on real. It's a little bit very different looking to Steve Smith, but the same concept. You know, his base yeah. is, is really, really good and then he has really good hands. Nice. Um, so nice. she'll, she'll hit, as a bowler, you're like, these are my plans, what should I do? If someone's sweeping me and I can bowl this, she'll find a way to still play that. And then from the Australian aspect, how much of a wild card does Annabelle Sutherland now oh, yes. play in the pool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, she's, honestly, she's going to be, if she, she keeps track, you know, like what she does and staying, as she's a pretty humble kid, the way she does, I would like to see her challenge Elise Perry's numbers, if not overtake her. Um, played a little bit against her here in Melbourne. She's not played much club cricket, but when she has, she scores hundreds. Like, I would love to see her average. And with the ball, I faced her about 12 to 18 months ago now. Maybe bowling about 100 clicks, nothing different from your normal medium pace. I think she was 15. Um, now, you see the speed she's bowling, and, and she bowled a really, really heavy ball. But most importantly, first game for Australia brought them home ball to a super over anyway. The composure at that age says more than any sort of talent or skill that she possesses. It's a big World Cup ahead, isn't it? Yeah. Looking forward to it. And big Tri Series final before that with Australia into it. Um, moving on to. I suppose from that, Sachin Tendulkar <laughs> facing Elise Perry yesterday down here at Junction Oval. How good was that? So let's, work, let's work that out. So two weeks ago, the bushfire appeal, sold out match, massive Sydney crowd, everyone rolled around Sydney. Now you've had a sort of thought, in two weeks time that won't happen, there'll be a Sunday afternoon match at the Junction <laughs> Oval and Elise Perry will bowl to Sachin Tendulkar. Changed a bit. Love cricket. Yeah, good oh. old Sydney weather meant it wasn't possible, but wasn't it great to see Elise oh. who in this tri-series, as, as I know the two sort of games that come to mind, she bowled four overs, one for nine, and four overs, one for 13. She's at the top of her game with the ball, mm -hmm. bowling to arguably the, the best batter of all time, Sachin Tendulkar. What a thrill that would have must have been for her. Oh, yeah. Unreal for any cricketer, and even those on the field. We actually, randomly enough, we had one of our Ringwood third grade girls, second and third grade girls, in that game on the field. She works for the SES, oh. and she was fielding, and we had two of them actually fielding in that game. She back was was she the one that led us through her legs? At point, she was at that point, she wasn't on the point. They were, no, they were actually both Ringwood girls, so right. I haven't <laughs> met the other one yet. But awesome. Jim, Jim's one of our girls, she's at training, she's awesome. uh, like, as much as she can around work. And so from that level to Elise Perry, and everyone in between to be able to bowl at the little master and opportunity like that. And on top of that, raised 7.7 .7 million. I think I saw this one. Oh, huge, um, huge. Well done to all involved. The Bushfire yeah. Appeal, um, Ricky Ponting, Adam Kilgris, Brian Lara, all the world's sort of yeah. past greats. Well done to everyone involved. Great um, thing that they did and, and awesome to see men and women integrating in the world's best yeah. female cricketer with one of the world's best male cricketers. Now, Moving on uh, overseas, England versus South Africa. The third one day international was overnight. England getting home. Um, South Africa seven for 256 off their 50 overs. Um, Quinton de Kock 69 and David Miller 69 not out of 53 balls. He didn't do much for the Hobart Hurricanes while he was here, but obviously doing well back in South Africa. And then England chased it down with uh, Six and a half overs to spare. So big win, win for England. Our mate Joe Denley, 66, um, got him home. Joe Denley just continues to find a way to make himself important and relevant for English cricket in any format. And you know, ironically, Joe actually had a, he probably could point to his experience with the Sixers recently as actually helping to reignite his career because 
I know you've played with Joe at um, Middlesex in up till 2013. Yep. And when I was there coaching in 2014, Joe was playing second level mm. for Middlesex. So it's sort of hard to believe that you've gone from at that point in time thinking that where's my career going and then how quickly it can change and well done to him he's been he's been beyond amazing Joe. well he, he's had a real roller coaster because he played for england in i think he played well, odi cricket at a very young age 20 or yeah. 21 then he he left kent he's sort of a smaller county came to middlesex lords and had great aspirations and, and didn't quite get it done at middlesex he struggled a bit and as you say he found himself in the second team for a little period there, and he's an absolutely lovely guy, one of the best guys you, you'll meet, and I was fortunate to share a chain room with him for a couple of years, and he was always trying to lighten the mood and, and sort of be very friendly to the younger guys like myself, and um, and then to go back to Kent, where it all started, and probably where he was a bit more comfortable, and, and he's, um, yeah, really blossomed. He, he sort of started to dominate the, the T20 tournament there and got his bowling involved, and then that got him yeah. a gig with the Sixers and doing well, got him a gig in other sort of franchise 2020 cricket and from there he's just blossomed in white ball cricket and I think he's yeah back in been back in the test side since then as well so it's always so heartening to see good people and he's a really good person do well mm. in, in sport even though that they take you up and down you have to see where his career's moving to he's just so heartening mm. well done Joe absolutely now before we quickly wrap up, I've got to get going shortly, heading off to do some coaching here in Melbourne. Um, Pakistan versus Bangladesh, another big series, test series going on at the moment. A shout out to um, a friend of cricket mentoring, Shan Masood, who um, is just going from strength to strength. He did well out here in the Australian um, in the Australian series against the Aussies. Um, he, he held his own, he batted for a long period of time. He didn't get the, the big score that he probably wanted, but um, we had a hit leading into that series. I threw him some balls, we chatted a fair bit. He's a lovely, lovely bloke, as we spoke about Joe. He's a lovely bloke and then someone you want to see do well. Um, 100 for Pakistan against Bangladesh uh, off 160 balls. Unfortunately, got out straight after he brought up his 100. But <laughs> Pakistan owning that test match. Bangladesh all out 2-3-3. Three, three. Um, Pakistan made piled them on 4-4-5. Four, four, and then Bangladesh 6 for 126 in reply. Still 86 runs behind with only four wickets remaining. So awesome to see Shan, Shan doing well. And... Um, yeah, another another big series, especially for those subcontinent teams. And go give you give the YouTube vlog a plug. Yeah, <laughs> head over to Cricket Mentoring YouTube. No, 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 the Shan Masood one. Yeah, yeah, head over and you'll see the Shan Masood video. Um, yeah, I was mic'd up so you can hear our conversation, and you can. It was a great view of his his, his game, and I think it was about 50, 50 or sixty minutes of, of content of him of Tim practicing and preparing for the Aussies. So. Play. Nice. I feel like there, if you were to go, and like obviously I don't know your game very well, but I feel like if you were to go a little bit longer through the ball and then flick, you'll get more power. I feel like you're sort of like flicking a bit too early with your bottom hand. So if you went a little bit longer and at the end, that's going to go for four rather than two. Um, yeah, head over and check that out. But another hundred for Babar Azam, who is sort of being spoken about as almost as good as Virat Kohli. So. Ooh. Big, uh, big, <laughs> big call. It is, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Very controversial. Sorry, he's playing against it. Bangla okay, good uh, luck. Yeah. Pack it. Yeah, 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 good luck. Um, <laughs> anything else from anything else from you guys before we, we wrap up? I oh. think just something that's connected in the last few year topics is good people. And mm. talking about Joe Denley, Sharon Masood, Josh Phillippe, like Craig Shifted, everyone yeah. that we've spoken on, just being good people chipping their way in different paths and all yeah. different directions, but eventually they're finding ways to get get some success at the top. Yeah. Absolutely. We love we love seeing good people do well. We try and be good people ourselves. We and do. Hopefully it all sort of comes back to everyone who's a good person. Guys, wrapping up, um, thanks a lot for watching or listening at this episode of Declared. Um, great to have our Melbourneites, Waldo and Barbie, here with me. Um, we have rejuvenated, we've revamped our podcast, formerly known as The Process of Success. This audio is going to appear on the new Cricket Mentoring Podcast. Um, still going to be interviewing people and, and publishing those uh, interviews, uh, conversations with um, past, current and future stars of the game, but also sharing a little bit of insight from us at, at, at Cricket Mentoring, a little bit of audio from us. So hope you found sort of our little spin on world cricket interesting and uh we look forward to chatting about it again soon. Cheers, guys. Okay.